Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Conscious Gatherers. This is Terry Palma with my co-host, Bev Thompson. And we're here to share our feelings, our thoughts for you for the next 30 minutes. Bev, are you there? Yes, welcome, everybody. This is our episode 14. Wow. So uh, it's been a nice road so far, and seems like we just started. And however, um, we may be repeating ourselves and, and many of our podcasts, but that's okay because it, uh, a lot of this information, it takes us a while to take it all in and understand who we are. So go ahead, Terry. Well, I'm, I'm kind of glad this is a podcast and not a video cast because I have to tell you, I haven't had a haircut in three weeks. I haven't shaved in three weeks, so I look pretty scruffy. My wife goes, <laughs> wow, look at you. And I actually shot a video today. Uh, she said, did you shoot it like that? I said, well, I put a hat on so it covered my hair a little bit. So <laughs> we're, we're kind of lucky here that you, you only get to hear me and not see me because I'm, I'm telling you, I'm really <laughs> And a lot of us don't That's, care, you know. Yeah, it's you know, like, you know, where do hey. I go? And I'm, and I'm home, and you know, I do go to the store if I have to. And of course, my face is covered with a mask, and I'm wearing a hat, so you really still can't see me. But uh, anyway, um, what I know you wanted to talk on something on your one of your books. I think your first, first book tonight. So why don't yep. we open up with that and see where it takes us? All right. Well, great. One. Uh, Terry and I were talking a few minutes before this uh, episode started, and um, one of the main things I wanted to talk about uh, is the word sovereign. What does that mean? A lot of people are using this in what I term the the metaphysical field or the awareness uh, people, um, saying that word, and it's like, okay, what, what does that really mean? So I've looked up the word sovereignty. Um, I've also handled a little bit of information a couple hours ago on this. So I would like to share it with you all. Um, what I received today is, uh, if I, I'm going to read a little bit of it, um, and then we can take off from there, and then I'm going to go into one of my writings in the book. All right. It says, Dear Ones, the time has come for the totality of self to be recognized by those of you who are ready to see yourself. Yes, in your totality. What do we mean by this? This is the moment of understanding the true force of your totality, the true force of your beingness, the true force of who you really are. You mentioned sovereignty. It means power, that wondrous, wondrous power that you all hold. It is you. So I looked up sovereignty, of course, <laughs> and what I received just online are these words, dominion, independence, self-governing, supreme power, or authority. So, all right, so it goes on. It says, is it that you are so afraid of holding or being this power? Interesting. Does this mean that you now know you must trust yourself in your decisions? How many times do we question our decisions? A lot. Is it now that you must decide on your own, uh, on your own what really empowers you? Which may be reading a book or working in your garden. It matters not what makes you empowered. And that is within you only. You have no right to power over another, as this is now fading from the collective consciousness. It is showing itself around your world, and you are a witness to the biggest transformation known to mankind. Big words, huh? You are entering into your new world. It is not out there someplace. It is, there is no out there out there. It is here, in this here and now, and it is only for you to perceive it. It is of your making. So that is the information I received today, and that, to me it says an awful lot. It's like, okay, are we ready to really trust ourselves? How many people have, have asked, <laughs> I think we all do, gee, I hope I'm making the right decision. 
you know, oh, I'm hoping I'm doing this correctly, or whatever terminology you want to use. We just question ourselves constantly. <laughs> it's like, I do it all the I do it all the time. I admit it. It's like, all right, this is really what I want to do. And then other times it's like, yes, this is it. You know, and, and, and you move forward. And you may move forward on something uh, that empowers you, and then you put that aside and you go to something else. So it, it's whatever, and it can be your, you know, your passions, it can be your hobbies, it can be anything. However, just keep in mind that, it, that you have no right to power over another. So to me, that's a real biggie. So any comments yet um, before I go on? Uh, Terry? Yeah, I was on mute. Sorry. Um, yeah, th- that's really interesting because we have a supreme sovereign, our creator, and yet our supreme sovereign, our creator, doesn't rule over us. And that's what you said about, you know, you ha- you are the supreme sovereign in your own life, and yet you have no power over anyone else. And right. that. That, that really rings home because we are the creator of our world and our sovereignty is us. And when we realize that and we realize that we're actually all one anyway, um, but, but that really rings true um, and holds true. It holds true to, you know, the supreme being, our creator, who had power, could, could put power over all of us. Obviously, if he or she, it created us. Um, it can rule us, obviously, and that's not what it is happening. It's not happening like that. So when you look at that word sovereign in those terms, uh, it makes sense. It's not it's not the sovereign or the sovereignty of let's say the the militant anti-government group that are out there. We're talking about it's a totally different usage of the word, and Bev described that very eloquently in the writing that she got. Um, also, just for some of you who might not know, what she read to you is something that came through her, through her consciousness from another level, and wrote, wrote those things down. So however you want to take that, to me, I mean, she, there's an entity that, that she deals with. To me, it's really another aspect of herself who's talking to her in a different realm who has a greater awareness of the grand picture of everything but that's what she just read to you and i think what you're going to share with us next bev is something that came to you the same way but you actually put it in your first book is that correct 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 well i uh, decided uh because i've written the three books called mystery of the universes it's a series um and talked about the uh the books in the um other podcast but when i want to go into um is a book called Book of Divine Surrender. It's in my um, first book, and there's writings within the book, the, the book, but they're called books within the book. If that makes sense. It's hard to, hard to explain that. Um, what I did, I looked up the word sovereign. I thought, okay, I wanted to see uh, if, if that was even mentioned in, in my writings, and I found it one place. Uh, in this book called Book of uh, Divine Surrender. So I want to share this with you because I, I think it's really um, amazing um, what's coming through. And uh, so I'll just go ahead and go with it, all right? Um, it says, this book of Divine Surrender, and this is from Sananda, by the way, who is, is giving me this information uh, at the beginning of the writing. Okay, this book of Divine Surrender explains just what this means. The decree was written long ago that the time would come when all would be in alignment for the people, peoples to be in the position that they would surrender to the God within and follow the path of righteousness in their daily lives. They will see the same in every individual and know that each individual has their own agenda that is to be experienced only by that person. No one can take away another's experiences or right to experience. This book is being maintained in the archives of the Library of Congress of the United States. It is indeed an ancient book 
one that was used in making the Declaration of Independence. How about that? <laughs> it's like, whoa! And I received this writing in uh, the year 2003. And so when this came through, it was like, okay. So uh, here's, um, I'll just uh, share a little bit of this writing. It's only a couple pages long, but um, I think it's important. And it explains a little bit more of the word sovereign. I say, we hold these truths that all men are created equal. Man is and of the creator. Each man has his own tasks, separate from the next man. Each man is to follow his own instructions, as each man's instructions are not the same, yet all men interrelate with one another. Each man, a sovereign being, shall integrate his experiences for his own soul growth and evolution. All is done for the good of the whole, the whole that is our creator. Now, when it says man, that's gender Gender is not part of it. All right. I think you all uh, realize that. Okay, to continue on. Path, paths or experiences are set for each soul before incarnation on the human level. The body top, type, male or female, is set into families that will nourish a soul's progression. This contract between the incoming soul and the souls of both the father and the mother is made before entrance into the body that is being prepared within the womb of the mother. It makes no difference for the soul if the mother and the father are in a relationship outside of coupling. The circumstances have already been agreed upon. With this understanding, all souls will evolve for their highest good. The internal God is the soul's connection to all that is. Knowing that it is one's connection to the source is the true listening to the divine. Understanding that man is the divine incarnate will remove any interference that may be created by, quote, outside sources. Thine own self be true is knowing that divine creator resides in all men. Listen to the still voice. Listen and follow your own divine decree. Love thyself and know that all are God. That's it. <laughs> How about that? That's pretty strong stuff there. Um, it would be interesting for this next week to do some research in the um, Congress, you know, Library of Congress with some keywords from your writings there to see if you can't come up with that book they're referring to. I'd love that. Uh, so if, if you know how or can make well, a suggestion. I was, I was or, going to the, the, the Library of Congress website, and they, I'm sure they have a search engine. Put in some of those key words and see what comes up. Okay. I'll do it. If, yeah. And uh, also, if any if listener, listeners out there uh, know a little bit more, <laughs> about uh, how to access all this information. I would love that too. But uh, I will do that and um, uh, see what comes up. Yeah, that would be fascinating. Um, I'm sure the word sovereign is in there, obviously. But if right. they're referencing a specific writing of a book and you've got a title of it, I would even throw that title in there and see if there's something in there that has okay. it. I mean... You know, um, that would be the first, my first inclination, which would be fascinating if they did. Um, yeah, that that's real, real good stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we have any live listeners on. Um, if there are, you can mute yourself now, and if you have any questions. But um, yeah, Bev, that's what I would do: uh, is dig into that and see what what, and and maybe. You know, Sananda could even lead you a little bit more specifically for that. You know, or well, I, yeah, I, I did ask the question, and I can share that with you. Um, and I did receive an answer because I, I had asked, uh, "This ancient book is being maintained in the archives of the Library of Congress in the United States." I said, "Where was this book found?" And here's here's what I received from that. They said this book was found on tablets discovered in the ruins of a temple called. Jehovah's Words. This ancient temple was built by the Bruneans in the 5th dynasty, 
dynasty of King Arthur. The world at that time was in turmoil because of the conflicts of the various sects and religions that were the fabric of the Eastern world. King Arthur's role was to bring the differences into a more cohesive environment. And uh, the Brunea, if I'm saying it correctly, B-R-U-N-E-I, is a country that is located north of Malaysia on the shore of the South China Sea. So, okay, <laughs> so now it brings up something, uh, and here I'm showing my ignorance uh, and being vulnerable. Was, and the legend of King Arthur, was that real or fantasy? Um, I'm told it's it's real. Um, that goes into another podcast, but I do have a few writings about King Arthur or the Round Table. Well, let's let's bring that up next week and look up your writing because um, you know there's two there's different schools. Um, my you know I kind of believe in it, but I also thought it was a fantasy and just you know something to to talk about. Now there might have been a real king that actually started the round table and stuff. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Uh, up front, I'm showing my ignorance. I've never researched that. Um, and perhaps I will uh, if I can find some spare time. But um, that would be fascinating also to look up and maybe discuss on next week's show. Um, All right. And then maybe I'll be happy to do that. that to and you too. And come in and share if they're so inclined to go do some research and share what they found with us next week. That would be quite interesting, I think. Oh, I would. I'd love it. So, all your listeners out there, and uh, whatever you find or whatever you know, uh, whatever you, uh, if you have uh, some uh, telecommunication with certain beings about this, whatever it is, we'd love to hear from you. So, Absolutely. I think. Yeah. It's that, yeah. Um, yeah. You know. I will dig into some of that too. So, um, great. I'll, I'll listen back, get the title of that book, um, and again, you, I, when you send out your re, your your report, we'll hear it. You might want to put the title of the book that those quotes came from. Your book, I'm referring to, and the title mm-hmm. of the book within the book, <laughs> and um, and that might help us do all do some research somewhere, and then someone I'm sure will do some uh, actual research on King Arthur which would be fascinating. <laughs> I started before the podcast. I did look up the fifth dynasty of King Arthur, and so far what's come up is the legend of King Arthur in the fifth century uh, versus fifth dynasty. So um, I just thought that was an interesting word, um, the word dynasty. So anyway, to be continued, not sure what all this means yet, but um um, through some research and just some internal communication too, um, and with you all listening, um, bringing off this all together and Terry, love it. It um, yeah. makes it fun to say, okay, what's what's going well, on here? It's interesting because dynasty, that word is usually associated with uh, Asian and Mongolian um, historical times, not so much used. In, I don't think it was used even in the um, European uh, aspect, and then definitely not in the United States. But mm-hmm. uh, and again, I might be wrong on that. That's my association with the word dynasty. Well, Mostly well there's Asian a couple things here. Holy, what's that? Yeah, yeah. It, well, it's, it said the ancient. This uh, my answer when I asked about this. It said the ancient temple was built by the Bruneans in the fifth dynasty of King Arthur. And Brunea, or if I say it correctly, it's a country that's located north of Malaysia on the shore of the South China Sea. So indeed, Mm -hmm. it's Asian. And we don't, and and King Arthur, of course, is England. So um, how this all fits together, we'll figure it out for next week. Yeah, absolutely. Gives us something to do. Um, It's interesting (laughs) how we went from sovereignty to King Arthur. <laughs> I love it. We did. <laughs> we did. We did huh? Looking up the sovereignty, oh, yeah. it's just, you know, it's, it's just to understand, again, what's going on and we're seeing, um, you know, through all the chaos that's going on in the world and, and the communications um, through the medias and, man, you know, like, who do you trust? Um, or none of them. <laughs> it's really trusting ourselves. And right. uh, that's really what all this is about. So um, you can look at it that way and it's like, whoa, you know, 
and and, so and we're doing we know this what together. Our topic is for next week, right? Uh, pardon me, please. I said at least we know what our topic is for next week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for our listeners out there, many times we don't know until the day of. So uh, it's like, okay, what am I going to talk about? But throughout the week, I, you know, what comes to me and, and what's in my face and that sort of thing, and uh, uh, then I'll, uh, I'll just, start Just so our listeners that. know, yeah. too, Bev is the one who basically most of the time comes up with topics. And I, I'm the one, she says, well, how does that sound? I go, Bev, it's fine with me. You know me. I'll talk on any subject. So um, that's kind of how these shows come together, folks. We, we, we sometimes have a topic. We sometimes don't. This is the first time we've actually, I think, projected a topic for the week that's following, which kind of makes it interesting. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I know that I'm looking forward to delving into that and getting a little bit more understanding. So uh, just so uh, you know, Bev does a lot more work behind the scenes than I do. I just kind of come and help co-host. <laughs> oh, yeah, but you're still doing it. <laughs> Maybe not as outwardly, but um, you're still doing it. Well, you know, t- talking about the, uh, the book of divine surrender and, and sovereignty, I mean, that's what it is. We're, we're surrendering to ourself, and that's what, again, what the sovereignty is. It's the power that we really are. And so surrendering to that and then stepping up and being responsible for everything in our lives. So I know we talked about that in previous ep- um, episodes, uh, but that's really what this means too. And it's like, and then trusting ourselves. Can we do that? that, that I'm going to bring up one more thing because this is what uh, has been in my face, and I know we could just got a few minutes to go. But uh, it's basically uh, the strength of our thoughts. And one thing that... I noticed, and I found myself even saying it earlier uh, before we be- became live, is the word kind of. I kind of think. It's kind of what this is. Or We use the word kind of often. And if you start looking at those two words, it's like, why do we even put that in front of something? Are we afraid of, of, of expressing ourselves openly? and owning what we're saying. So something to think about. So you'll start noticing uh, when you use the word kind of or when somebody else uses it. And uh, it's used all the time. It's, it's amazing when you, start, you know, when you start recognizing that. So anyway, that's, uh, we have talked about conscious language, and I thought I would bring that up because it's, it's really been in, in front of me all week long. So that's I, I that. Would, I would venture to say, and I'm going to do some research on that. I, I would say that when you use that term, your subconscious mind goes, what? It has no idea what you're talking about. Because it, it can't take it literally. It doesn't know what it means. Like I can't, I can't so clear that statement, but is very clear and the subconscious reads that okay i won't let you because <laughs> that was your statement i can't that's yeah. your statement. but yes kind of isn't doesn't re- re- reference anything i'll have to i'm going to play with that one too over the week uh, now <laughs> right. you got me doing a lot of homework Bev, for next week <laughs> <laughs> all right well we may have a couple episodes here one's going to be on king arthur yes. and the other one's going to be on um, language and the strength of our thoughts and how we outwardly project uh, and, and maybe, to look maybe. at everything that we're, we're, everything that's coming out of our mouth. I wonder, I'm going to try and get a hold of a friend of mine who was the master and teacher and came up with the whole system of conscious language. Maybe he's still doing that. I, don't, I haven't touched a base with Bob in a long, long time, but I have his number. I'm going to reach out, now, probably not for next week because we have a plenty to do so, Bev, remind me uh, to reach out to Bob for some uh, episodes in the future to see if he's available because he is a master of language. I'm telling you, he is a master of of conscious language. Uh, he's and he's and he's just a great speaker. Bev, you met him once because he came and did a workshop years and yeah. years ago. In Google I remember. Here. Yeah. Yeah, amazing um, what he yeah, could do yeah. and and. Uh, uh, it's one that you need to see, but he can read your language with your your 
hand oh. movements, your arm movements, your body language, all of that. Well, that's the, yeah, he's on, he'll put you on stage, and a matter of minutes, you will be talking about things you never thought you'd ever talk about. And he knows mm-hmm. how to do that based on your body language. How you, mm-hmm. What signals, he'll ask questions, and your body's going to tell him what you're hiding. And, he, and he'll go right in and bring it up, and you'll go, how did he know that? What? Huh? In most cases, you know, those are intimate things you keep hidden. In most cases, people are in tears in 10 minutes. Because <laughs> there's well, certain things that so deep. It's like, and I've seen it dozens and dozens of times because I've been in workshops with Bob uh, over the years, several of them, and they're week long, uh, the ones that I attend. And so I've seen it, you know, time and time, and I've experienced it myself. You know, I'm, it's almost like, oh, no, I'm up. Bob's going to get me. <laughs> it's like you try and hide, you know, and you can't hide. So it's, it's really that, kind of interesting. Okay. Well, that guys, goes right into divine surrender. It's, and, yeah, and I even wrote down yeah. in my notes for today. What is, right. on the in, what is on the inside comes out. In other words, what are we hiding? And the right. word kind of, you know. So all of that was coming to me today. Uh, I wrote, wrote it down today anyway. And yeah, it's like, we That hiding. word might be the hider. Yeah, very interesting. Well, yeah. we've, we spent another almost 30 minutes here. Um, and, and, and I think it's wonderful talk and uh, great sharing. I would hope that our listening audience will come in next week and share in what some of the research they felt they did, and uh, and that that will help to our show immensely. So, Bev, um, why don't you have a final say here, and I'll sign us off, and and we'll call it uh, an evening. Well, I I thank you all uh, for listening to our podcast. Um, it's uh, we do get some feedback. It's been wonderful feedback. So I I thank you all. Um, but understand ourselves, um, know ourselves, and start being our sovereign beings. In other words, be honest with yourself. I've been saying that all along. Love yourself, wholly and unconditionally. And we are merging more into ourselves. And it's already here, but can we perceive it yet? And... Uh, some people can, most people cannot. So anyways, we're here to share with you all uh, and to bring things up for all of us to look at, and we're right in there with you. So we appreciate your taking the time to listen to us. And Terry, thank you for being you who you are too and uh, bringing some sense to much of what we're talking about. Well, thank you, Bev. And listeners, want to thank you too. Um, for joining us on Conscious Gatherers. Uh, All be safe. Remember, your safety comes from your thoughts. Be smart, think smart, and do smart. Um, And don't worry about, don't dwell on the worry and the fear. Dwell on the love and and that I can do. Um, So until next week, this is Terry Palma and Bev Thompson saying see you next Tuesday at 7 o'clock Eastern. Thank you. All right, thank you. Good night.